Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sally, this is Secret Life of a Seamstress. I hope you're all really well and that you've had a good week. We had some snow here over the weekend, which was really exciting. We hardly ever get any snow here in the UK. Um, and it was actually the kind of snow that was deep enough to play in, which was really nice. And it was just what we needed to be able to go out and have some fun in the snow. So that was exciting. Um, so yeah, I hope you've all had a good week. I'm here today to share with you what I've been making over the last month or so. Um, so I've got everything that I've been making in January and also a couple of makes that I made sort of um, just before Christmas and at the end of December. So I think I've got about four or five sewing makes to share and also a couple of knitting makes which is nice. So January and the end of December ended up being quite a productive few weeks in the end despite the fact that we were all thrown into lockdown and we've had homeschooling and things to deal with. I think um, the more kind of unsettled I'm feeling, the more I tend to make because I love sewing and it helps keep me sane. So I have made quite a lot this month um, and it's been really nice to kind of have sewing and crafting as a distraction once again from everything else that's going on in the world. So if you are new to my channel, my channel is all about sewing and crafting and knitting, talking about things that I've made, uh, plans for things that I want to make and anything sewing and crafting related really. So I would love you to subscribe if you haven't already. And also don't forget to click the notification bell so that you can be notified of any future videos that I might make. So without further ado, I will get on and share with you what I've been making. So the first make I have to share with you is my lovely Florence blouse. So this blouse was made as part of a collaboration with Makerist. If you haven't heard of Makerist, I'll link them down below. They're an online kind of pattern and creative hub, I guess. Uh, they sell lots of indie patterns, not only for sewing, but for knitting and crochet and also embroidery and things like that as well. So do go and check them out. They have a really, really wide range um, of patterns um, and ideas and free patterns as well. Um, and a really informative blog uh, with ideas of things to make and do. So Maker has kindly contacted me and asked me if I'd like to be involved in their huge $2 sale, which they were running over Christmas time. And they had lots and lots of indie patterns um, up for sale for only $2 over Christmas time. And would I like to choose one to make up and help them promote? So of course I said yes. And I had a look at um, some of the patterns that were available and eventually I decided on this Florence blouse. And I'll pop up the line drawings here so that you can see what the blouse looks like. Um, but I was really taken with this simple design blouse and I really, really loved the shearing detail on the sleeves there. So um, this is what I decided to go for. And um, I knew I had this lovely red floral viscose in my stash as well that I thought would pair perfectly and it was really festive for over Christmas time as well. Um, so that's what I decided to go for and you can see from the line drawings that it's a really simple construction. So actually there are only three pattern pieces to this blouse. So it's a raglan style. So there's the back piece there with the raglan seams and then there's a mirrored kind of front piece of the blouse there, which just comes together in a nice V shape. Um, and then obviously you have your raglan sleeves. So it was a really quick and lovely pattern to put together. So I've not heard of Size Me Sewing as a pattern company before doing this collaboration, um, but they have some lovely patterns available. The Florence blouse is actually part of a kind of capsule wardrobe pattern collection. So I think there's the Florence t-shirt and then there's the blouse here, there's a skirt and I think there's a pair of trousers as well. And the idea is that you kind of start with the easiest garment and then you work your way up so you're improving your skills every time as you work your way through patterns. Um, so it's a really lovely idea, the pattern is very helpful, lots of drawings, um, very well kind of explained along the way what you needed to do and there's lots of um, videos as well that she has online on YouTube so if you're ever stuck along the way the videos are very helpful um, and if you've not tried shearing before there's a whole section on the video which tells you how to shear these cuffs which I thought was really good. So yes that's my Florence blouse, that's my first make. Um, and I really am pleased with it. I think the only thing I wish I'd done was um, stay stitch around the V neck because um, at the time the pattern didn't ask you to stay stitch and I did think to myself, well maybe I should actually stay stitch and then I didn't for some reason, I think I just forgot. <laughs> um, so you maybe can see that the neckline has gone a little bit wavy. It doesn't notice too much when it's on, but I think if I made this blouse again, I would definitely stay stitch the V neck especially if you're using like a viscose or something that's a bit 
uh, drapey because that's obviously cut on the bias and it might stretch out a little bit as you're sewing. Um, and this v-neck is actually just finished with bias binding and you can use shop bought bias binding uh, or I made my own from the fabric because I just thought that looks nicer and I didn't have any shop bought. <laughs> so yes, that's my first make, the Florence Blouse by Size Me Sewing in collaboration with Makerist. So second on my list of things I made uh, this month is actually what I'm wearing and this is the Linden sweatshirt by Grainline Studio. So here's the pattern, if you haven't seen it already, it's a really simple lovely sweatshirt pattern. It's one I've had my eye on for so very long and I've not got around to making it for some reason. So I'd had this pattern in my stash actually for quite a long while before I actually got around to sewing it um, and a long while ago I also bought this fabric. Um, and that sat in my stash for a while as well before I sewed it up and I think it's just that I'm not as inclined to get on with jersey makes as I am with my waving makes. Um, but anyway, that's another story. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, eventually I decided that actually I'm wearing a lot of sweatshirts that I shop bought. I need to get on with my homemade sweatshirts. So um, one lovely afternoon I traced off this pattern um, and cut out my fabric and sewed this jumper up in around an hour's time I think so I really should have got on with it before um, and just got it made because I absolutely love it now. So it comes to about hip length I have actually shortened this a little bit um, and the reason I shortened it was a happy accident <laughs> so I only had about a meter of this lovely jersey it's a fleece back jersey so inside it's really kind of furry so I picked up a metre of this and it was actually on the Minerva website as like the last metre they had but I really liked it so I just bought it. Um, so I only had a metre and I thought that would be enough to get the whole sweatshirt out of. Actually it wasn't quite enough to get the full length sweatshirt out of um, that metre of fabric so I did end up chopping about an inch off of the front and back of the sweatshirt which just made it slightly more cropped but actually um, I really like this length so it is a bit of a happy accident that it turned out that way um, but I think in the future when I make the sweatshirt again I'll actually just keep that length because I really like it. So the cuffing for this sweatshirt is actually from Stuff and Still. It took me ages to find the right colour of cuffing. Uh, buying sort of sweatshirt cuffing and things online and trying to match to your fabric is really difficult isn't it? Um, so it did take me quite a while to get the right grey <laughs> and um, yeah I'm really pleased with the match now so you can see if I hold it up to the camera there it's a really good match with the grey but I did have to buy another couple of grey ribbings before I got the right one. I do have another couple of sweatshirt patterns in my stash now so you would have seen that I've made the Billy sweatshirt recently and I've also made the Jarrah sweatshirt by Megan Nielsen and I love both of those too but I think as just a really quick go-to sweatshirt pattern this one is the one because <laughs> um, it's just so quick and easy to make up and I really like the raglan style of the seams and um, the way the sleeves are set in and everything and I love how speedy it is to sew up so that is a happy vote for the Linden sweatshirt. So the next make I have to share with you is my Wilder gown. So I did mention in my recent uh, fabric haul video that I was planning to sew this up in the um, beautiful art gallery rayon fabric that I'd received from Minerva which was gifted in exchange for a blog post. So the Wilder gown pattern had been um, kind of on my wish list for quite a long time but because of the oversized nature of the pattern and how it's kind of uh, big and billowy and floaty I wasn't really sure whether it would suit my petite five foot three frame and how it would look um, but I just couldn't get the idea of sewing a wool gown out of this fabric out of my mind so in the end I decided to just go for it um, and try and kind of adapt it for my shape. So there's actually two parts to the Wilder gown pattern. You can actually just print off the bodice as one separate PDF pattern, which I thought was really helpful because in my head, I was only gonna use the bodice part of the pattern and then I was gonna use um, a different skirt pattern for the bottom. And in my head, I was gonna use the fiber mood mirror skirt uh, tiers for the pattern and just lengthen them. In the end, I didn't go for that. I'll, I'll talk more about that in a minute. But um, I thought it was really helpful that you could just print off the bodice pattern if you needed to and you didn't need to try and work out from the pages which parts were the bodice and things like that. So yeah, I really, really liked the um, Wilder Gown pattern. It's the second Friday Pattern Company pattern that I've used and I've been really impressed with their instructions and how the pattern is written. So many helpful tips in there, so many different ideas of 
ways that you can adapt the pattern um, and things that you can do to make life easier for yourself and I just thought that that was really helpful. So I went ahead and printed out just the bodice uh, section of the PDF and then for the tiered skirt I used my Myosotis dress pattern skirt parts of the pattern just to uh, get the kind of width of the tiers and um, I just lengthened them slightly. So you'll see that I've got pretty much even tiers for the, for the middle tier and the bottom tier, they're quite even. So I just cut a wider rectangle for the bottom and a narrower, narrower one for the middle. <laughs> oh, I never feel like I explain these things very well, but hopefully you'll get what I mean. Basically, I just winged a couple of rectangle designs and put them together and it worked okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm really, really pleased with this. Uh, so you'll notice that I put in some elastic at the waist. Basically, um, when I'd finished, I tried on the dress and just decided that, as expected, I wasn't really too keen on the whole nightgown-y feel of it. It just felt a little bit too frumpy for me. Um, don't get me wrong, I think it looks amazing on other people. Um, I think if, if you're tall, this kind of dress looks amazing. But for me, um, I just felt a little bit frumpy in it. So um, I decided to add a strip of elastic around the bottom of the bodice just to bring it in at the waist. And I'm so pleased that I did that because I absolutely love it now. Um, it does suggest that you do that in the pattern if you're not happy with the feel of the dress. Um, so it wasn't my idea. Lots of people seem to think that it was my idea when I put this on Instagram. It is a suggestion in the pattern. So that's where I got the idea from. So basically I just stretched a piece of elastic around my high waist to get the measurement. Um, and quartered it and quartered the bodice and then sewed it in with a zigzag stitch when the dress was finished. It is a little bit tricky to do that because you're kind of manoeuvring a whole dress through the sewing machine and trying to stretch elastic at the same time, but I got there in the end. Um, and I think that that's just a really, really good uh, tip if you're not happy with that oversized feel of the world gown, then definitely try this elastic. I know some people have put waist ties in as well. Um, but for me, I just preferred the elastic, so I'm really pleased that I did that. So I have blogged this dress, it's up on my blog now and I'll link it below and it's also up on my Minerva profile, um, so do pop over and check my full blog post out if you're interested to read a little bit more about the elastic hack and how this dress came together, but I absolutely love it. I think it's going to be more of a summer wear dress for me rather than a winter tights and boots type dress, but I can't wait to wear this when the weather warms up a little bit. So next I have something quite cute to share with you. I made a little pair of pyjamas for my daughter. And this has been on the list of things to make for a long while now. I've had this lovely cotton jersey in my stash, which I picked up from Stop and Still quite a while ago now. And I've just not got around to making these pyjamas. Um, they were a really quick and easy make. So once again, I'm not quite sure why I didn't get on with them sooner. Um, but yeah, it's just a little t-shirt top, long sleeved t-shirt top and then a pair of leggings for the bottom. So really, uh, they could be worn for outerwear, but I made them in this little rainbow print glittery fabric for her, and she really likes that fabric. So I'll pop a little picture in of her wearing these pyjamas. She really likes them, um, and they came together super quickly. But the pattern I used to make these up was just simply um, a t-shirt pattern, which I had from Stop and Still, which cost me around two pounds from the Knit and the Stitching Show. And honestly, I've got so much use out of this. I've just um, hacked it to make a dress. Um, I've used it obviously for these pajamas. You can make the short sleeve version or the long sleeve version. And she's actually growing out of this size a little bit now. So um, when I made these, I just added a centimetre to each side just to give it a little bit of extra width there. Um, and that works fine. So yeah, it's just a really good kind of base for a t-shirt pattern. And for the leggings, I've used um, a little leggings pattern that I picked up from Bobbins and Buttons. And I'll put in a picture of the pattern here because I have it as a PDF. So these leggings are so quick to sew up. I think I made these in about half an hour, all on the overlocker. Um, the elastic in these is inserted in a really interesting way. So basically you measure the elastic around your child's waist. Um, and then you stitch it together to make a circle and then you put it into the waistband um, and then you kind of just sew the waistband um, onto your trousers with the elastic in it and it is a little bit fiddly to do but it's actually quite a nice way to do it because then you haven't got 
the channel to make and you haven't got all the threading through and everything to do. So I thought that was a really interesting way to do it and actually quite a quick and easy way to do it too. I'm actually halfway through making her another set of these because she loved them so much. Um, and I've made the t-shirt part, but I didn't have enough fabric left to make the leggings. So I've actually ordered another metre of this lovely sausage dog print from Stoff and Still, um, just to make her the leggings as well to go with this. And I really, really love Stoff and Still jerseys for kids. I think they're really great prints and my daughter loves dogs. So she really, really likes this sausage dog print and she liked the rainbows. They've just got really cute patterns um, and designs. But the only thing is the delivery charge is quite high. I think it's about a five pound delivery charge. So um, I always try and kind of save things up. And if there's anything that I have my eye on, I'll put it in the basket if I'm not desperately in need of it and just um, keep it in my basket for a while until I've got a few things that I want from them. And then I only need to pay the delivery charge once. So continuing the kind of lockdown loungewear PJ kind of um, feel, I made myself a set of loungewear. Um, and it's a very pink set of loungewear. If you've watched my recent fabric haul video, you'll know the fabric that I've used. Um, it's a lovely, lovely pink melange sweatshirt fabric, which I got from Abacom Fabrics. So just to say that Abacom Fabrics did kindly give me a £25 gift voucher to shop on their website with. And I chose this lovely soft pink melange jersey and I made a pair of Tilly in the Button Stella joggers. This is a pattern that I've not used before. Um, and I was so pleased to finally give it a go. So here are my pink joggers. <laughs> I'll pop in a picture as well, just so that you can see them on. Um, but I absolutely love these. Uh, they came together really nicely, as all Tilly the Buttons patterns do. Um, and they were just a really lovely, quick, um, easy sew one evening. So with Tilly the Buttons patterns, I'm normally a two, but I'm kind of in between a size two and a size three. So um, I cut a size two for this, but I did shorten the legs slightly around two centimetres. Um, I probably actually didn't need to do that in the end when I tried them on. They're kind of ankle length, which is fine, but I think next time maybe I won't bother to shorten them because um, I didn't really need to <laughs> in the end, which is quite unusual for me. Normally I always need to shorten the legs of trousers. Um, but yeah, I'm so pleased with how comfy and cosy these are. This fabric is really lovely. I'll show you the inside. So it's kind of really fleecy and cosy inside and it's that really lovely sort of warm sweatshirty fabric. It's quite thin and it is a little bit see-through in this colour. So you have to make sure that you're wearing white knickers underneath if you're ever wearing these out, which I probably won't because they are a bit pyjama-y. Um, but um, yeah, what more can I say? I elasticated the waist and then I just used a little bit of pink jersey binding for the, um, what do you call it, the cord that goes around the waist because I had that in my stash. Um, so these will definitely be made again and again, I think. I absolutely love them. So if you remember from my last video, I did say that I was going to make a matching sweatshirt to go with these pink joggers. Um, when it came to it, I only had two metres of the pink fabric, so I didn't quite have enough to get a whole sweatshirt out of um, the pink fabric. So what I decided to do was a bit of colour blocking. And I've never done this before, but it was really nice to have a go at. So basically I cut um, the body of my Linden sweatshirt. I used the Linden sweatshirt pattern to make the top for the large set. Um, and I just cut the bodice and the back, sorry, the front bodice and the back from a gray sweatshirt fabric that I just had left over in my stash. And um, I used the rest of my pink fabric for the arms and then for the bottom, uh, waistband. I really like how that's turned out actually. It kind of just takes away from the full-on pinkness um, and marshmallowy feel of having a pink jumper and pink joggers. So yeah, really, really pleased with how that turned out. I love it as a lounge dress set. I think I'm never going to be taking this off. <laughs> I've already planned fabric for another set like this. So it's definitely going to be something that I'll be making more of in the future. So that is my lovely cosy loungewear set. So it's the Linden sweatshirt as the top and the Stella joggers by Tilly the Buttons for the bottoms. So on to a couple of knitting makes I have to share with you now. Every year I kind of set myself a couple of vague crafty goals um, and last year's was to try and knit a jumper or a cardigan top down and try and learn to knit um, in the round. 
because it's just something that I've never mastered with knitting. So it got to around October last year and I hadn't even given this goal a try. Um, so one Saturday afternoon, it was pouring with rain, um, I thought to myself, I'm just going to have a go at trying to knit something in the round, um, see how I get on. So I have been looking around online for quite a while now at the different lovely knitting patterns that there are, and the patterns by Petite Knit caught my eye, I don't know if you've heard of them, I think they're a Danish company. Um, but the patterns that they have on their website are really lovely. Um, and the pattern that I decided to go for in the end was the Petite Knit Novice Cardigan, uh, which is this one here. So it's just a basic stocking stitch cardigan, but it's knitted top down and the sleeves are knitted in the round, so it's kind of knitted all in one piece. Um, and the idea of making a knitted garment this way really appealed to me because I really hate sewing up knitted garments. Um, so that was another reason really why I wanted to learn how to knit all in one piece and in the round. So I downloaded this pattern um, from the Petite Knit website um, and set about trying to teach myself how to knit top down. In the end it wasn't half as bad or as scary as I thought it was going to be, particularly with a cardigan because obviously you're knitting back and forth rather than with a jumper where you'd be knitting the whole yoke in the round. So I really enjoyed learning how to do that. So basically it's knit from the kind of collar and ribbing at the top um, in a big yoke piece and then you divide for the sleeves and then you continue to knit the body down to the um, kind of waist ribbing and um, it was really quite easy to do. So as you're knitting in the round you're kind of increasing to make that curved shape by just doing a make one increase every time. So I'll hold it up here but obviously I'll also put some pictures in so you can see it on. So you can see here at the top where I've done my increases there are some tiny little eyelet holes. So as part of my learning curve I realised that when you're picking up your make one stitches if you knit into the stitch front ways it will give you a little hole but if you knit into it backwards you don't get the hole quite so obviously. <laughs> so that was something that I learned along the way. Um, and I decided to leave the eyelet holes in at the top just as part of my kind of making journey so that it would remind me of what I learned while I was making this cardigan. So um, in terms of sort of knitting the yoke, it came together so quickly, even though you're kind of knitting quite a lot of stitches when you're doing that big round yoke, it did knit up really quickly. I used this Feels Like Butter um, Lion brand yarn which I just picked up from Hobbycraft. I think I got it in one of their sales where they sometimes sell sort of three for two balls of yarn and I'd had it for quite a while so I felt like I wasn't really losing anything if this um, garment didn't turn out quite the way it should. Um, but it's really really cosy knit up actually, it's really kind of soft and squid squidgy so it's not quite chunky yarn but it is thicker than a double knit so I think I used a size six millimetre needle. Um, and that's knitted up really lovely and it's really cosy and warm. So when it came to learning how to knit the sleeves, the sleeves are picked up from the bodice and then they're knit in the round. So this was the part that I was kind of um, most nervous of because I've never really knit anything properly in the round. So um, I tried using a small circular needle wire and found that that was stretching the stitches too much. So after talking to a couple of other people online that knit, um, that guided me kind of in the right direction. I decided to give the magic loop technique a try, but it's basically just a way to be able to knit in the round on a longer wire so you don't have to keep buying different sizes of sort of wires for the different things you're making. Um, I ended up watching lots and lots of YouTube videos on how to do this and um, I found a brilliant one by The Nervous Knitter, which I'll link down below, and the way that she recorded it and the way that she showed it just kind of made me get the technique and um, yeah once I'd got it I found it quite easy to do. I think um, you can tell from this knit that my tension isn't perfect um, and where you kind of split the stitches for doing the magic loop technique there is a little bit of a ladder down here but I think that's just all part of the learning curve and the more I do it the better at getting the tension right I will be. Um, and I just finished off the cardigan with these lovely kind of vintage style buttons which I picked up from Etsy from Button Shed UK. So I love how this cardigan turned out and the best part about it was not having to sew it up. <laughs> so at the end you're kind of just literally sewing in your um, ends, you don't have to seam up the garment or anything like that. 
it's just kind of done and also you can try it on as you go so I lengthened this a little bit and I just kind of worked out how long to make it by trying it on along the way and the same with the sleeves as well you can try on the sleeves as you go and just get them uh, to the length that you want so it's a really good way to knit a garment I think and I'll definitely be trying other patterns that are knit this way um, if you watch my make nine video you'll know that I'm aiming to knit the Whitmore sweater by Amy Loudon of Taylor S Studios um, so I really need to get some more practice in but yeah I'm so pleased that I managed to master that technique last year and finally the last make I have to share with you is another knitting make and it is this hat which I knitted up um, and this is the Beatrice Beanie Hats by Rowan Yarns. So this is a free pattern on the Rowan website. It's just this lovely um, knitted beanie hat. It's knit in a kind of three, three by one rib um, and you kind of alternate the rows so that you get this kind of spongy looking rib knit effect. Um, it's a really nice pattern to just sit in in the evening. It doesn't take too much concentration. Um, and yeah, so that's what I've been doing in the evenings recently while watching Netflix. <laughs> So this is my hat, I decided to use the proper yarn for this because a couple of years ago at the Knitting and Stitching show, Rowan had a stall there and they had these hats out and um, you could basically knit this beanie hat from one skein, skein however you say it, of yarn. Um, and I decided to invest in the proper yarn for this project because I knew how super soft and cosy it was. So the yarn that I've used to make this hat is Rowan Sultano Fine. Um, it is a pricey yarn, um, but you only need one skein of it. And it's actually, it's made with silk, mohair and cashmere. So it really does feel super soft and luxurious. And at the end of the year last year, I just thought I would treat myself um, and make something really nice. So I'm really pleased with how this turned out. It was a lovely project to knit. Because it's quite fine, it does take a little while to knit up as hats go. Uh, some hats are really quick to knit if they're made from a chunky yarn. This one did take a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, it's just lovely. Um, I've actually made this pattern before. I made it in a cheaper um, wool kind of yarn from Hobbycraft. And stupidly, I put it in the washing machine and it got completely ruined. <laughs> so um, that was a lesson to me, never to put anything hand knitted in the washing machine. I don't even know why I did that. I know not to put those in the washing machine and things like that in the washing machine, but just one of those things. I just ended up chucking it in with a load of holiday washing, I think, after we'd been to Cornwall in October. Um, and it came out just like half the size of what it was before and it was completely ruined and I was really sad. So I did salvage the pom-pom from that hat and I've used it again on this new um, version of this hat. <laughs> So yeah, I'm very pleased with this hat. It was a lovely project to just sit and knit in the evening and I think it was worth investing in that yarn. I'll oh, know not to put it in the washing machine this time and I will definitely hand wash it and take good care of it. <laughs> but um, yes, if you're looking for that pattern, it's Beatrice Beanie pattern and it's free on the Rowan website. And you can obviously use a cheaper yarn if you wanted to. As I say, I used a cheap one from Hobbycraft. Just did a quick, um, tension swatch just to make sure that your sizing is going to turn out okay um, and that was absolutely fine but I just thought I would treat myself with this one and um, I will be wearing it on my dog walks with pride. <laughs> so that's it, so that's everything that I made in January and towards the end of December. I hope you like what I've made. Please do let me know as always what you've been making and what your favourite make was from the month. I think my favourite make was probably my Wilder gown but it's also definitely what I'm wearing here because this is so cosy and I'm so glad that I managed to have a go at the Linden sweatshirt finally. I'll hopefully be back next week with another video and I think it will be a sewing plans for February video. I've got a couple of new fabrics to share and some plans to chat through so that's what I'll hopefully be talking about next week. Um, I've been thinking about videos and what I'd like to record over the next few weeks. It's obviously going to be a little bit more difficult to film things like sew-alongs and things while the children are at home and doing their homeschool. So I may not be able to do anything quite as um, hands-on as that for my videos. But I was wondering if it might be fun to do a Q&A video. So I've seen lots of people do these and I've really enjoyed watching other people's kind of ask me anything Q&A videos. So I thought it might be fun to do my own. So I have asked on Instagram if anyone has any questions for me and I've had a few already, which is really nice. It's always a bit worrying when you ask these things that no one's gonna ask you any questions and it might be like tumbleweed and no one asks anything. 
Uh, but yeah, if you do have a question for me, then do pop it in the comments below of this video. It could be anything sign related, anything silly, <laughs> anything that you want to ask, obviously within reason, but anything that you want to ask, do put it in the comments below and hopefully I will try and film that video maybe sort of second week of February. So I do hope you enjoy your day, whatever you're doing. We're going to do our homeschool work now. My children are just on their Zoom videos for school, so I'm quickly filming this video while they're on their videos and then we're going to start doing our work. So I'm trying to seize my opportunities to do these things where I can these days. So have a lovely day everyone and I'll see you soon. Bye!